Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the next live interview on the F10X Academy Group. I hope everyone's had an awesome week so far. I'm here today with Richard Woods. Uh, Richard's an award-winning entrepreneur. He's a keynote speaker, radio presenter, best-selling author, and BBC Apprentice finalist. Uh, Richard's here today to talk to us about how we can get leads, pretty much the lifeline for most businesses right now. Uh, Richard, how are you doing, mate? Oh, I'm amazing, and thank you so much for inviting me onto this. Um, that's an amazing intro. God, who wrote that for you? Pretty good, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting we're getting used to it now. We're getting used to doing these. Right? <laughs> great, great to be on. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. So, um, so what's the latest with you and your and your business? How 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 are things going with you know with this whole lockdown and the situation we're in? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that we did very quickly is actually kind of normalized um, the slowing down of certain products that we offered. So I think sometimes when people get into that flight and fright mode, when, you know, the proverbial hits the fan, they start to think about, oh, no, I might lose that client or this big client that I've had a relation with has got that problem. And I, I'm starting to have these these losses. So we kind of looked at what our um, some of our product range and said, right, well, we, we expect about a 20 percent haircut. Um, on clients there. Um, but then we very quickly upped the marketing on our online courses. So we do something called the 30 Leads in 30 Days Challenge and that piled in. So loads and loads of people jumped onto that. We did a, a number of uh, online courses and we do a lot of done for you lead generation work. And of course, at this time, lots of people need lead generation. So we cranked up the marketing on the stuff that we knew people would want during this time. We normalized the losses of people that we thought wouldn't be staying with us and so that was cool so we didn't get too cut up about that and um our business has done um well i don't want to over egg it because i know obviously lots of people are um in um dire straits at the moment but uh as a lead generation agency and uh people that talk about online um we've grown during this time amazing awesome stuff and, and you know there's no doubt your your business at this time is doing so well you know that's 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 a given considering, you know, everyone's going to be needing to, to develop leads at this time, especially. Um, what well, something I found is is how online advertising has changed quite a bit in the last few weeks. I mean, we're looking at you're looking at Facebook ads, for instance, it's like 2009 prices all over again. Have you sort of seen that in the UK as well? Yeah, we, we are. We are. The, the reason the, there's there's a lot of logic behind that. So the a lot of the e-commerce um, businesses. Um, have had to pull out the market. So the ones that aren't kind of essential have actually pulled out. And a lot of the spend gets boosted up by people that are trying to do that. Um, and of course, a lot of the brands have kind of um, done less. And of course, the agencies, there's a lot of agencies that have furloughed their staff. So their staff that were working campaigns for clients who then turned off their ad spend, then the agencies furloughed their staff. And so therefore, you've got um, less PPC operators in big agency, less brand spending money in these agencies. And that trickled down um, to the SME space, which is the space that I operate in. And so our ad spend, you know, I was getting um, three pounds of conversion previously. It's now down to one pound 22. When we we're just looking at about an hour ago um, per, per new sale. Um, so that's one pound 22 was, was creating a 45 pound profit margin on that. So, um, someone yeah. very clever at maths will probably tell me that's something like a 35x return on your ad spend or something around there. But um, yeah, whoever can tell us, guys, in the comments gets a free workshop with Richard. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it's, a free, it's a free maths workshop, though. I, you know, I just want to have a caveat for that. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, it's all, so the the answer to your question is that if you do, if you are going out there and you can fulfill and you can move your business online you can get sales online in this space and i'd argue most people can do you're a fantastic case study of that um there is amazing weak points in the market at the moment where you can just pile into and just spend i've got i've got a client um sorry to jump in with a few examples so this client is a, div a, a divorce lawyer she's been doing legal stuff forever always very much meet the people um etc kind of have them come into her office do a proper conversations sign all these documents before she even gives them a quote um we just built out a google ads sorry no facebook ads into messenger which then puts into many chat and then into a into a sales funnel that then takes payment 
And as I'm speaking to her on the phone today, she we we set it up for this morning. She just got a 400 quid sale that she never even spoke to this person. And her mind is blown. She's like, yeah. someone just spent 400 quid for an initial conversation with me. And I've never spoken to them before, never know who they are. And they just came all the way through from Facebook ads into many chat into a Kajabi conversion event and uh, a payment through Stripe. A lot of people are going to be like, what are you talking about? But basically, <laughs> basically, I did some stuff on Facebook and it gave her 400 quid. And no, no, that's unfair. I, I, I gave her the ideas and she did it. So who's, who's never done this stuff before. She did it herself. And she's her mind is like, that's what this yeah. market is at the moment. The, there is so much opportunity out there and there's so much cool tech that you can pile into each other and stack them on top of each other that is easy to implement that mm. you can do it. If you, you know, even someone that's never touched this stuff before can do it. Sorry, massive rant, massive rant. My fault. No, cool. I love the massive rant. It's good. It's good news. Um, we've got we've got loads to talk about. Um, and you know, we've only been talking for six minutes, and I feel like we've got loads of amazing insights already. But um, it'd be quite cool for me. It'd be quite cool for me to hear um, your story. Uh, you know, who is Richard Woods? Why are you doing this? Um, what got you here? Just a little bit of a background, um, for, you know, about you. Yeah, I, I, I'll give you, I'll give you a few bullet points. We'll take, you'll take, a, it'll take a minute or so. Um, basically, came out of um, university with no idea what I was going to do. Got a credit card, went over to India and China, and brought a load of stuff on the credit card. Stuck it on a shipping container, brought it back to the UK. Walked up and down a high street with a will, with a suitcase, selling stuff to people like Del Boy Trotter. Um, and God knows why you don't go to just pay for an expensive degree to then go and be Del Boy, do you? But that's what, pretty much what I did. Like literally imagine rubber ducks that are kind of got tartan colored rubber ducks or piggy banks that are like polka dot piggy banks. That's mm. what I was. That was the awful stuff that I was selling. But it crafted my kind of salesmanship and uh, ability to have kind of confidence just going in to see people um, we, we started to create our own website to sell these gifts and, we, and i built that myself i say we my brother and i um and we built this site and uh, it was really good worked really well and then people were like well could you build me one of those websites and of course as someone that doesn't say no to a sale i said yes we'll build you one of these websites but you have to buy a thousand pounds worth of uh, photo frames from us because we're doing a photo frame offer so we sold a thousand pounds of photo frames to someone and built them a free website um, and then other people heard about this and we kept on selling photo frames and kept on building websites so it was like a Buy our photo frames, we will build you a website. But then people would be like, I've now got loads of photo frames, which I didn't so want. So were you a, a website business or a photo frame business? <laughs> just a business. Just, just a very like misguided you're business. You're really, you're really carving out like a solid niche here, you know? I know, I know. Like, no, no one else was competing against us. Swap <laughs> photo frames for websites. Um, yeah, so, so in the end, I kind of realized that we're better at doing website stuff than we are at photo frames and weird gifts. Um, so yeah, so so we came a website developer. We then clamped on everything under the sun because we didn't really know what we were doing. So we could do email marketing and PPC and website before we became a full service agency and then realized that actually the thing that I love the most, um, and I say this over and over again, I love getting people with phone ringing and inbox pinging with inquiries. And that's the thing. It's that bit where you've got your phone. You, you'll get it when doing what you do. You'll, you'll see your phone ping up and go, boom, someone's just booked this or someone's just become a new lead or downloaded this ebook, or someone phones you up and say, oh, I saw your ad. I'd want to. It's that little moment of kind of, you know, endorphin hit that you get. Where you say, oh, got an inquiry. Oh, that's the bit that I love. And, uh, and so therefore I love doing it for us. So, so I, never get bored of it it's like a hobby and therefore then i sell that service to other people or i show people how to do it and that will be from making funnels and creation so 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 basically it became that um i wrote a book about it um and i put together a, a, a business plan and submitted it and ended up finding myself in a boardroom with um lord sugar and doing a tv program and stuff which i'm sure will probably come up at some point so i might as well Cheer no, no, I won't come up. <laughs> I won't come up. <laughs> okay, yeah. we, we, we've got we've got to it now. We've got to the uh, Alan Sugar bit, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It just so it, tell it, me, it, what it, what's it like to be fired by Alan Sugar? Yeah, it's it. Do you know what? Do you know what? It's really. It's only the other day, like literally three days ago, my I was sitting there, kind of like just staring into like. 
staring furiously into that. And, and my wife says, you're, you're thinking about it again, aren't you? And of course, the the about it, does, she doesn't even say. And I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. And I'm still thinking about the things that I didn't do that, that, co- that messed up. Basically, you know, for people that didn't watch it, it's The Apprentice and um, I went on to it. I, I I still hold the record for the most amount of wins. I only lost one task on the whole thing. Um, I ended up basically like every single little anecdote you can get on *Girl and the Apprentice*. I hit and and was the the I was steaming away and just thought I'd won the whole show, no problem at all. Kind of I could see me and me and Big Al in the back of the and in the back of the rolls, you know, smoking a fat cigar, and off we go to you know go and make our billions together. And so I then go into the the final five, um, and quite rightly, with a big head like mine, I got absolutely slapped to pieces by Linda and, and some some um, amazing woman um, called Linda Plant, who is about yay high, and she absolutely mm-hmm. took me apart to such an extent that by the end of it, I was like, fair enough. Um, and so I, I th- to this day, it really annoys me because I just, you know, when you... you just, <laughs> Someone says a couple of home truths to you, and then you kind of crumble. And if I didn't crumble, yeah. I, would, I would still won the show, but um, I did anyway. So, well, I mean, how, how much of this is kind of I, I, I watch a lot of these shows, well, I don't watch a lot of them, but I, you know, when I think of these shows, I think, are they staged? Are they completely authentic? Is it a mixture? Is it any of this rehearsed, or is it just like if they're gonna if they're going to give you give you those hard truths, are they doing that for the first time and they're capturing that reaction? Yeah, a hundred percent. Especially in those, especially in those final five interviews. Yeah, I mean, you you are getting interviewed. You're getting grilled. I mean, it's wow. unbelievable. The the only thing that that would be kind that I ever saw that which I would say was gamemanship, if you like, yeah. is that um, they you get set the task, you're thrown into the cars, and you go off to London to go and you know sell some stuff or to create you know to create fish fingers in billionsgate market whatever it's like selling stupid stuff or going a cure or buying stuff um the the only thing they did is if you had an argument with another contestant on the tv show they would make sure that you're sitting in that car with that person for the rest of the day just to try and make the argument bigger or if you were late there would suddenly be a thing where the camera had to get changed on the on the film crew and then so you're just a little bit more late and you're like oh i was already late now you're making me really late and so it's just it's just little bits like that that's kind of what yeah. i call tv gamemanship but um other than that um it was just you know 18 people literally thrown at each other and given business tasks for three months and you, and you go away for three months and you get um one 10 minute phone call home a week to your kind of loved ones and you don't do um you don't do any you know you don't do anything else other than kind of really go at each other and, and i remember you you were talking about um you, you you were talking about the three things that you help to build um people within the web warrior academy to build mm. kids you're talking about com- um, confidence um what's the other three what's the other c's uh, confidence, uh, confidence, concentration. Yes, <laughs> I was you. and and I was when I was when I was looking at that, I was just thinking, do you know what? Um, those that's all the things that they kind of test you on on the Apprentice. They try and test you yeah. on, you know, are you considerate and do you, you know, are, do are, what confidence you have? They try and t- kill mm. you. They, they basically try and take all of those things, those three things away from you, and try and shake it up and just to see what person's left at the end of it. And it's it, it was right, quite interesting watching you explain yeah. this thing. I mean, moment- I mean, the we focus on those three C's is we we interview you know two two to three thousand parents to find out you know to get a deep dive into what it was to develop a person's character, and because yeah. that's what we do in the Warrior Academy, right? It's not just getting a black belt; it's getting a black belt character, developing that character. So yeah. we wanted to simplify it to three things. So it it sounds like this was like an aptitude test they were giving you to you know to to test your character, right? But on, but on live TV. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And and over over the space of twelve weeks, and and literally the cameras burst in at the start of the day, and they and then they go at the end, and and every single one of those three scenes they, is is completely tested. And at the end of it, you're right. Your your true character does show, and and it's quite interesting to to see it. There's a lot of psychology around um, putting people through that much stress and seeing how people get on. So interesting. Mm. So yeah, wow, yeah, a lot of a lot of pressure, I can imagine. Uh, so so after you after you left the Apprentice, um, 
you know, obviously, did how, how did that affect your confidence? I mean, if I can imagine your confidence feeling pretty hit after that. Uh, I, look, I, I, I did, I, you know, I got all the way to the end. Um, you know, I just missed out. You know, I was in the final. I, I kind of, um, you know, I, I should have won it. So everybody was like, can't believe you should have won the rest of it. So for everybody right. else, it was, you know, I did incredibly well. For me, me um, I feel mainly to you about it. Um, and so it's kind of, you know, well, it's just, it's a massive shame. But yeah, yeah. Um, it was a success then, really. The opportunity, you got yeah, the opportunities are amazing. You know, the mm. the phone calls, the amount of inquiries that we got through the agency. And one thing I always say to people is that when they go on to The Apprentice, if they do, if they try and do or any TV show, be ready for what happens afterwards because you might not win it. And everybody that kind of, you know, 90% of the candidates that I was on there with wanted to go and become a celebrity. So they wanted to go on and be in the jungle or wanted to be in Big Brother or to go on to some other TV show. And so by going on to that, um, by going on to it, they kind of didn't get the win. They didn't therefore then get onto the shows. And so now they're all working for kind of, you know, they're back into companies and, and sort of moaning about, you know, one day they should have been this or they missed yeah. out on the opportunity. You just think if you if you got ready, I was ready because I was already running a business, already had staff, um, already had my product sorted, already had my book ready. In fact, the book's quite a funny thing. So I'd had the book written, but I didn't launch it because I, I wanted to have, it was part of my business plan. And so it would have been part of Lord Sugar's kind of business plan. Um, yeah. But when I knew that I got fired because they film it in the spring and then they launch it in the autumn, I knew oh. that I was going to get fired. So um, I organised a um, an event at the Hippodrome in, in Leicester Square. So it's like a big thing in London, red carpet event, invited all the apprentice candidates along to it and also all the media. So the Metro, like the, the local tabloids and stuff to this event in London and did a book launch and got everybody up on stage, got all the apprentice candidates up on stage. It's me handing out the books and then kind of seeded into all the press that this might be the final of The Apprentice and it's Richard winning. <laughs> Of course, the next day in the press is Richard Woods wins The Apprentice. And oh, like, and then that night I get fired and I'm like, <laughs> but my book in the meantime went to number one on, on Amazon, like loads of sales, were bestseller, like the whole thing kind of went through. Oh, really? I remember yeah. my book launch around me being fired and uh, it went, it was brilliant, really, really good. I love that. That's a few story. people you know there. So, so Lucy. Um, was my publisher and Dan Priestley was at that event. Yeah. Dan, Dan actually then did that. So yeah, it was good fun. It was good fun. Amazing. What a great story. So so um, this was all you know. You did the KPI course leading up to that, did you? Or yeah. So, so, so that's how you know Daniel and Lucy and exactly. So so um, the key person influence course, which obviously you and I both know, and, and I'm sure a few of your listeners mm -hmm. will know. Um, I, you know, I, I was at my, my agency was doing everything to everyone and was really nothing to no one. So it went on to the KPI and it helped me to really streamline around that lead generation piece um, mm. and therefore write the book, you know, put my process and product ready and get my pitch right. And then, of course, um, I then went out and pitched my way into The Apprentice literally within weeks of finishing the course. Um, and, you know, I'll attribute attribute a lot of me getting onto the apprentice to the kpi talk course and to to dan himself the big man dan he's yeah i think he's, he's gonna come on later in the month um speaking about putting you under pressure online and pitching um <clears throat> do you still remember because i remember seeing you live on stage giving your apprentice pitch um <laughs> I'm, I'm literally trying i know what you are i can't remember it now do you remember your, do you remember your apprentice pitch <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Are you gonna? Are you sure you you're happy to do it for us today, Richard? Oh God! Right. So, so when when you look when when you go on to this, you've got to remember that you've got to kind of be the the upper side of confident. Let's just say <laughs> when you when you try and pitch to be on there, because when they when they ask you like you you'll go you'll go the first thing you have to do you have to there's like seven of you that they line up like like you would expect from like an, an X Factor, like as if Simon Cowell was there, but it wasn't. It was like the Apprentice kind of production staff. And three of them there voting and, and just seven of you lining up and they kind of go, right, one to seven, who, who's going to go first? So I think, well, at least um, 
at least the number one's going to go first because I was number seven. So as we walk in, I'm kind of giving good eye contact going, hey, you know, I've got my hanky in my top pocket looking all swish, my tie kind of double Windsor. Um, and of course, it's a matching combo, like the tie and hanky combo. It's like, it's an important, Get away, it? shiny, proper shiny blue suit. Like I was, mm, proper, you know, like fresh out of Burton's. Um, <laughs> so, so I walk in with this eye contact, like you wouldn't believe to these judges. And of course, then they go, right. And we're all going to give like a 20 seconds on why you should be Lord Sugar's next business partner. So that's when you say it to us. But you, um, but but you know, we're, we're going to start and you just take it in turns, right? Um, and we're going to start with number seven. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh no. Um, and so I was like, right, okay, right, right. I've just got to go super arrogant. So I go, I'm a walking, talking business with a suit, with a passion of a Frenchman, the driver of a German, and the stiff upper lip of a true English gen. I've got a business plan to die for. I've even written a 50,000 word book on the subject matter. I will win The Apprentice and I will be Lord Sugar's next business partner. So put me through to the next round. I'm like, ah. Like, oh, I'm like, I'm walking, talking <laughs> business in a suit. What am I talking? Who's business in a suit? Like, that, oh, that, that, that was the inner Del Boy that just popped, popped out. Was that was that rehearsed at all, or that just that no, just came? No, out? mate. I just the stuff that comes out of my mouth at the best of times is should never be rehearsed. But yeah, so yeah, game Amazing. over on that front. Amazing. <laughs> but oh, but yeah. you know, it, it, it clearly was enough. It clearly was enough. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, they don't teach you that pitch on KPI. <laughs> they don't teach you that one. The right, rest right. Of you do, but. <laughs> Well, I remember, I remember seeing you doing that into a to a group of about two hundred people, and I think everyone was just in tears of laughter after that. And that was in the first two minutes of your talk, so it, oh, it's man. clearly you know it's clearly worked in your favour over the years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, when you said it, I thought oh, I can't even remember it anymore. But yeah, look, oh, yeah. there you go. You came out perfectly to my brain forever. I think, yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, cool. Well, we've we've ticked the Alan Sugar box. Sorry, mate. I didn't yeah, mean well, to do it. You, you, you got to do what you got to do, right? I understand. You got to do. You got to put me through. Uh, right. Let's let's get down to business now. Let's get down to business. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, as well as all that, you you know, you're obviously someone who's very creative, loves to pitch, and loves to think of ideas to grow businesses and to help. To help small businesses um, generate leads and inquiries, as you say, and that's what you're passionate about, right? And um, you've got a group. What's the what's the group called? Do you say the group? Yeah, you've got a group, a, a community, right? Oh, yeah. I I actually I have a, a methodology. To, are you talking about Facebook groups? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so I, I I think everybody should have a group for every level they go up your value ladder. So you should have a free group. So I've got a, a group called Get More Leads. Quite nice and simple. And then I've got my 30 Leads and 30 Days Challenge VIP group. So that Facebook group goes in there, goes with the challenge. Then I've got my inner circle group. And then I've got a group just for one-to-one -one coaching clients. And so by having people graduate from each Facebook group to each Facebook group kind of creates a really nice funnel. And then you can kind of drip down different bits of value and different bits of content. So the people in the inner circle and the one-to-one -one groups are getting a truckload of amazing mm -hmm. Um, stuff as a huge you know every single thing and then you kind of then just sort of put a little bit of a barrier in between some stuff all the way down yeah definitely that sounds, sounds like a brilliant brilliant concept you know to, to develop that community each stage of your product ecosystem right um in, in terms of sort of platform for advertising you seem to be really keen on facebook facebook being being your main platform uh yeah i mean in in my quest to constantly test a measure, I ended up accidentally buying a boiler servicing business um, and um, running that. So we 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 had seven vans on the road running around servicing gas boilers up until November last year, actually. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, October last year, and um, we we were doing hundreds of boiler services a month. You know, so it was you know. I, I love being able to show that I can do lead generation. So I had a proper business. Um, mm. And so we were doing that. That was amazing for Google ads. And oh my God, the amount of money we'd spent on Google ads, you wouldn't believe. Um, mm. But um, 
So, so when you're talking about B to C or um, some sort of, you know, services sector business, I would, you know, so talk to me in October and I'm spelling, spending thousands and thousands of pounds a week on, on Google ads. Um, that was yeah. my platform of choice. Sold that business in November, which was nice. And then since then, um, I'm only left with my, um, only left. Uh, I, got, I got my lead generation agency, my lead generation inner circle, my, and my lead generation coaching courses. So um, that's all about entrepreneurs and i find when you're talking about the entrepreneur space it's very much community led and personality led and so instagram and facebook and youtube loving a bit of youtube ads at the moment a bit of pre-roll ads um could be really nice um but yeah predominantly facebook um and and majoring on traffic ads and then retargeting conversion ads loving those at the moment our messenger ads can't get enough of those Okay, so so what in terms of the situation we're in right now, what's really really working for you, and um, that you think our viewers could benefit from hearing in you know approaching this as if someone's never used Facebook or, or Google to advertise before, whichever route you choose to talk about. Okay, <coughs> I just I just wonder how how can can I share screens? Yes. You can how, do, how tech you can, do you want to go on this? You can even give us your whole course if you want. I, I'm putting like a, I'm putting like a little pen and stuff in into a magic thing. Like I could do it. I could do a diagram. Should we do it? I no, I think I'll do it with a mouse because I just know. Can I share screens? Share screen. Yes. Yeah. Do you know? Can you can you do it from your side? Yeah, mate. I'm 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 like a bloody champ on this stuff. Okay. This is not your first day, Richard, is it? This is not my first rodeo. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Richard is taking over, guys. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen from yeah. this point on. It's not oh, my it's, responsibility. It, it, over it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Right. So, so we're going. To, hang on. We're going to we're going to share a different screen. Actually, we're going to get rid of. Are you allowing me to do this? Um, you, you, you have controls. Yeah. I, um, okay. Right. So. Yeah. Oh, is it? I think. Um, I think you might. Well, have I you may have to click on the um, Richard Woods' screen there. We all go again. Go again. There we go. We've got the screen. Oh, no, you were there. You were there. There, there you we go. go. There we go. Oh. We're all right. Okay. So don't worry. Don't, don't worry, everybody. Be, don't be afraid. <laughs> right. So I'm going to get my handy dandy whiteboard out. So if anybody thinking about running out of traffic gas, Give me an idea. Is it like a coaches and consultants you might have as an example, maybe? We've got a really big mixture. Guys, in the comments, write, write what you do in the next 10 seconds. Just quickly write down what your business is, what you do. Um, it's a real, real mix, I'd say. A lot of these guys are, are B2C. A lot of them are B, uh, B2B. Um, everyone, pretty much everyone in the group is Dubai-based. Um, it's a real mixture, I'd say. And a lot of, a lot of media guys in here, I believe. Um, videographers, uh, cameramen, um, film production. We've got, uh, we've got accountants. We've got, yeah, more photographers. Um, yeah, absolute mixture, really. And the, the group's growing quite quickly as well. So, so market and business intelligence to the energy sector. Is that is that what people are saying? Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, let's let's so let's take a photographer, something something nice and easy like you were saying. So, photographers yeah. obviously going to have um, problems at the moment doing photography. So maybe they want to go and sell a photography course or photography academy or something online. So, that, so something along like that. So they go right, okay, we can't go outside, we can't do photography. So let's go and maybe do a photography course. So, so what you can do is you can do a classic. Um, free challenge into a pitch call into selling the online course so if the if the the product is here so say it's a course and say you're sending sending that for 500 is it dirham 500 dirham yeah yeah no, i i don't know how much that is but um let's let's say i'm going to put that as pounds so say the course is 500 quid we want to get there this is where the win is so from here we want to actually get people from facebook ads mm -hmm. And I would do uh, an A-B test of two different ads. So excuse me, I'm sorry that this is messy, but I'd do an A-B test traffic ad of Facebook ads. I would pile that into a landing page and that landing page is on your website with a free five-day challenge. And you'd say to people, right, um, in five days, I'm gonna show you how to shoot the best photo from inside your own home. So the idea is that you kind of do that quickly 
and you show them how to do some really cool photography in home because you know everybody's isolating, right? So then you then hit them and this five days goes here, one, two, three, four, five, or we'll do another day here. And then what you do is you do a bonus day six and that bonus day six can be a phone call with you and that phone call or a Zoom, you make that a Zoom, and that Zoom, you review how they've got on in the challenge. They submit their photography to you. And then you say to them, so 15 minutes of the Zoom is like a challenge review. And then 15 minutes, you then pitch. And that pitch is, well, if you've done really well there, then maybe you want to progress onto my 500 pounds course plus community. Um, and then people then buy the course. So what people are looking for, so I'm gonna recap what I've just drawn to you, but what people are looking for is a four-legged table. One, they're looking for leadership during this time. So that's leadership, thought leadership with the industry, how to do better photography, how to do it within lockdown, how to actually then, um, you know, take a better photograph. Um, people are looking for community. So they want to be part of a um, community of people that look like them, that are taking photos like them, that were part of the, the community of photographers. They're then looking for um, rhythm. So they want to get into the rhythm of doing it. So some sort of um, regular thing that they can do each day to kind of get them into um into the process you want to get into their habit everybody's breaking different habits because we all went to work and then we went home we had dinner etc whereas in the new world we're all at home so we're all developing new habits so if you can get into their daily habit by giving them a little task to do each day then you're into their rhythm and therefore you become habit to them and then finally you want to give them personalization so you give them a little bit of one-to-one -one time so you can see by a five-day challenge it gives them rhythm every day so they do a little task every single day in the challenge and take a better photo you then do personalization because they give them the day six it also gives them leadership here every single day because they think oh great you know you're showing me how to do it that's great you then on on the day one you tell them to join the free group so that's the free group so that gives them community in here on day zero and also on the first day you say make sure you book your day six phone call which is the personalization phone call on day one because your book your diary gets really booked up which gives you a high mm -hmm. conversion rate on those phone calls which means you do more of those pitches which means you get more of these 500 pound 500 dirham whatever um sales of your online course and all you need to do is you push in a b different ads into that challenge here here's the challenge and you'll just pile people into that. And, and that this is all, and, the, and the, the actual challenge is completely automated, right? The challenge itself is completely automated. You're always crazy. Would you like to see one? Yeah, let's see one. Have we, have we got enough time? I'm rambling. I mean, if, you, if you've got a challenge for these guys to do, then, I mean, everyone here is probably interested in, 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 um, in learning more about this. It could be quite good for us all yeah. to do your five day lead challenge. Really interesting, because there's a five day free Facebook ads challenge here. By the LinkedIn Academy. What's this? This is amazing. This is really good. So here you go. Facebook ads, five day free challenge. Um, can I stick that in the notes? I, I can put that in. Can I can I do that? How can I can do you that? Can I, can I even can I do a pro I'll do a private chat to you, see if you can actually then stick that in. Yeah, well after the um after the, the, the live, I can just post it in the comments. Here you go, guys. It's lead gen academy to UK backslash facebook ads just i'll send you the link on there anyway it doesn't matter right so so the point is that here's the landing page that i just talked about they then put their name and an email address in right so then they convert so this is just this is i'm not talking about you guys i'm talking about you would do one of these for you you'd put a challenge together for your audience right so then here's a five-day challenge one join the community great so you're given community and then look you've got um a nice um, here's the get more leads group. So it's like a nice group and community. So there's lots of people in there. That's lovely. And then book day six phone call now. Look, so we need to do this. Richard's diary gets really booked up. So then you make that a nice calendarly link. Look at this. So, okay, look at this calendarly. Look, so they can go in and then they can book the different days there. Isn't that looking great? So boom, the lead's been generated. You've created a sales conversation for you. That, so that just happens in the first day. So we fast track straight to conversion. Happy days. Um, and then look, next steps, um, log into the challenge, boom. And then they log into the challenge. Um, and I'm hoping that that's the right. Aha, okay, good. And then they go into an online challenge. And then look at this, welcome. And then day one, day two, day three, day four, and then bonus day six, let's review it together. And then you get a phone call where you can then upsell them into your product. So you can see how that works. You can see the challenge went all the way through into there. 
They then book day six. It's almost like me showing you the strategy behind the strategy mm. that I'm always I'm, I'm, I'm saying for people to go and join. You don't have to book day six with me, okay? So if you go on the, the, Facebook, the Facebook ads challenge will help you do some really good things. In fact, so, so the five-day challenge is is um, it's embedded onto like Kajabi or a, a, Kajabi. a platform like that. Okay. Kajabi. I love Kajabi. Um, I love Kajabi, yeah. I'm a, I'm a massive advocate of Kajabi. It's 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 the best out there. Um, so so we um, so then so then what you want to do is an A/B test Facebook ads. So let me show you how Facebook ads results from that. So I'm just going to quickly, very quickly show you. Oh, hang on, I could probably do it here. I've got the login here. Um, manage ads. Da, 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 da. I'm going to I'm literally showing you under the proverbial skirt of my advertising here, but um, hopefully. It will add some value, which I'm all about. Right. <laughs> da, 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 da. So how many people on your calls go this deep? That's what I want to ask. Yeah, I'm, I'm just accepting it. This is how it is. I'm enjoying just it. go for it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so here, so this is just a little test run that we're doing at the moment. So at the moment, um, so £170 have been spent on these two ads. These are the two current live ads. One is a five-day Facebook message conversion. So it's just sending people to the page I just showed you. We've had 63 people convert onto the challenge, which means that um, that's paying £1.24 a conversion. That's £1.24 for someone to sign up for your five-day free challenge. Like that's They're going to go through that no like and trust thing with you over five days faster than you would ever believe. That's huge audience acquisition for £1.24. That's mental. Uh, so there's only 77 quid spent. And I've got 63 new bits of people on my database that are doing a challenge. Mental. But we don't stop. This. Don't Do not stop there because there's 165 people here. Can you see that on link clicks that went to the page but didn't convert? More for them. Do I find them? Because I'm going to put this Facebook ads challenge remarketing to them and this remarketing you see here a little bit more expensive cost per result but these 33 people have converted and it's based upon 165 people here i remarketed those 165 people that didn't convert so the other 102 people and i managed to get another 33 of them to convert for only two pounds 81 remembering that they didn't convert in the first place so then they reconverted two pounds 81 so basically from 165 link clicks i'm getting just over 100 well pretty much exactly 100 um, people that are, uh, that are converting um, for 170 quid. That's, Amazing. I mean, Seb, you're into this. That's mental, right? Yeah, that's really, really good, isn't it? What's your, um, out, out of those 100, let's say, um, who go through your five-day um, five challenge, how many are you seeing convert for your, your, your sort of item at the end? Yes, so, so, so what we do, we offer two things. So, um, we're offering a done for you package where we actually do a, a five day challenge and create a five day challenge for them. So we're we're looking. We so far we've got five conversions off of the hundred people that come through, but obviously we haven't done everybody there. Um, and then we're offering an inner circle, so we do a mastermind, um, and we've got three mastermind sign up. So there's seven in total. And so the so seven seven sales in total from that 170 pound spend. No, it's seven, seven, seven conversions, um, yes. which um, five, um, hang on. So it's done for you, three grand. I'm, I'm revealing all my secrets here for you. Um, <laughs> so five, I should have been able to do that. So it's 15 grand plus um, three at the inner circle rate, but that's, so it's 400 times three equals that. I love the transparency, by the way. It's very good of you to do this. So 14, 14, oh, sorry, you're not even seeing, I'm not even sharing that screen. So <laughs> we're looking, um, so plus the 15 grand. Um, so you're looking about 29,000, exactly that. So um, go, go me through that. So, so this, it this, ain't bad for 170 quid. So 170 quid ad spend, and this is what you're getting right now. And then the, they go through the system, and out of that, you're getting there's two there's two packages you're selling there. One is the inner yeah. circle, and one is yeah. the yeah, the done for you. So we done for you. we create a five day challenge for someone. Um, yeah. So for example, um, the the leader of tomorrow um, is a challenge. So it's become a leader of tomorrow. This is like a challenge to do with. Um, 
um, becoming, um, you know, at the, the, the World Economic Forum released a load of things to say what the leader of tomorrow should look like. And we created a challenge for Kim here who uh, wants to be a leader tomorrow. And so we, we created a challenge. So we did that plus, so month one, we create that. And then month two, we do all the Facebook ads and Google ads and, and stuff and LinkedIn outreach as well. We do it. So do traffic and um, set up. So that's a three grand one off project. Um, so five of those. And then the inner circle is a mastermind group where we meet at the moment digitally every single week, plus two one-to-one -one check ins every single week. And that's 400 quid a month. So that's also incredibly good value. So we got three people on that and five people on the done for you. Right? So Amazing. It's, it's good. Very interesting. Yeah. There you go. I will stop Thank sharing. You for sharing. Yeah. Really, I think that's given tons of value <laughs> to our guys i've never seen anyone go that deep on uh, on their processes on it so i really really appreciate that man really really well, good that's i think i think that's got to be what it's all about right like yeah. the, the 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 point the point is there's no point banging on about being a guru without being able to back it up mm -hmm. and um, show i always think if you can't show your numbers then you're not probably doing them yeah 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 what do you what do you feel are the biggest mistakes that small business owners are making right now during this time um i think i think people are um waiting to sell because they're worried that it's it would upset people by trying to sell them some stuff during this time um i'm also um so that's one that's a huge one um i'm also seeing people that um if, if you keep on airing your objections they become your reality so people keep on talking on why they can't do stuff so it becomes the reality of why they can't do stuff so they don't do stuff whereas i'm always saying that i can do stuff and so the weird thing about it is i do it and so mm -hmm that's just it's just always happened so, so people like to cluster with fellow moaners and they'll have a good old moan and they feel better about themselves and um and therefore you know the moan's over and they're still losing clients tomorrow fine yeah i, know. I lost in a circle clients you know I, I lost them that was my 20 percent haircut but we sold more and we knew that we'd lose 20 percent, so we upped our marketing we knew that um we needed to look at other stuff and so we we launched a few other products we we also started to communicate a lot more openly about things like, um, you know, the, the the lead generation stuff that we're doing is showing people, and and it's 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 great. You know, the response being back, and so therefore our business has um, grown as a result of it because we we what we didn't moan about. We could have moaned and not done anything and just accepted twenty percent instead of we realised that twenty percent was probably going to come off. Um, and we set as a target to not lose more than twenty percent, and actually we're about seventeen percent loss of people but then we've actually then outsold um that 17 percent and put more people into the top plus also sold a lot of other stuff it's just it's easy it's easy yeah yeah it's having that kind of state of mind isn't it yeah you know putting putting yourself out there being you know positive but also planning planning for the worst you know expecting that haircut during a difficult economic economic time um and you know i totally agree i see a lot of people um stopping all advertising you know, we had we had a, we had another great um, great interview with a guy called uh, Raj Katecha, and he he mentioned he's a Dubai local, and he mentioned he had he had a great thing he said, which was um, you know keep keep the light outside of your shop on, you know keep the lights on, and um, and I think a lot of people aren't doing that. Do you know what I mean? They they they're turning the lights off, and this is the time where you, where you you know you've got this opportunity at a very affordable at a very affordable time, you know, to do it because you, you, it's never been this cheap to. You know, those results you're getting, you wouldn't be able to get a year ago. No. no. So it's there's there's opportunity within this if you've kind of got the courage and the and the foresight to yeah. to go for it. I think. Um, can, I, can, I add, can I add one point to that thing about yeah. the results? Yeah. Is that the 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 point is you're right. The results wouldn't have been so good, i.e., one pound twenty to a lead, but mm -hmm. they would have been about three pound fifty a lead. And when you look at what my ROI is for mm. the conversion rate it still stacks up so yeah. the big question is is that yes all right it will be cheaper and easier now but the point being if it's going to work for you you get the funnel right it's going to work anyway it doesn't matter when the prices go up or down it's going to mm. work if you get the right funnel 
Yeah, right. So it's, it's all about having that funnel and testing it. And that was that was one of the questions I think someone asked further up. I can't find there been so many comments and questions and um, tons of engagement. Um, but one of the one of the questions was about how important is testing? Why why bother with an A/B split test? You know, why how, why is it so important? Because um, every campaign you do is another bit of data, and so I um, I sent out. The, the mid results to my inner circle, right? And so I, I actually had three ads um, that I was testing on there. And so um, one ad was just a picture of me. And um, it was me at a conference doing a sort of squiggle on a whiteboard. And the point being is that it was a retargeting ad. So I kind of seen the page and then another picture of me might help to kind of say, oh yeah, that was the bloke who was talking about the Facebook ads. Um, but that was performing at like five pounds a lead in that campaign I showed you. And there was one which had at the start, it was like 11 conversions and that had had one conversion and it was like at 75 pence a lead. And I said to the inner circle, I said, which, which ad would you turn off here? And of course, everybody's like, oh yeah, I'll turn off the ad that's like five pounds of conversion. I was like, no guys, because if you look, it's only been 24, 72 hours or whatever it be, it's been a short amount of time. Don't tweak and change and stop stuff now. It's all a test. And by the end of it, it's come out that actually, um, that advert performed better than the one that was at 11 conversions. It just took a little bit longer to kick in and mm. it just, it's fickled. Facebook is fickled. So you're always testing. And actually between the two ads, the remarketing ad and the normal ad, they had exactly the same three different AB test ads. And the winner of each one was different. So one ad performed better than the other ads in campaign A and then campaign B a different ad performed better, even though exactly the same ads. Um, so it's just, it, you're always testing. You're always mm. testing. Um, and there was one common denominator, which was one ad performed the worst across both of them. So the next time we rerun it, we kill that ad that performed the worst across both of them and then put another one into test. And then you keep your winners, you, you get rid of your losers, and you keep on adding until your ads get higher conversions and less cost. So you spend less, you get more conversions because you're always testing. And that goes, you can test audience, you can test um, creative, you can you can test, um, does Instagram perform better than Facebook ads? Um, all easily done. Does does evenings um, work better than mornings? All of that fun stuff. And I, and I, mean, I mean, testing is marketing fun, fun, marketing fundamental, really, isn't it? Even back in the day when it, when it was all printed, people would, would test newspaper ads, several different types of, of the same sort of advert, you know? Yeah. Um, and you know, big bigger companies will test 500 versions of the same picture, just a, a slightly different shade of color, or you know, one word slightly bigger than the other word, or you know, just to to see what the change is until they get the the perfect, the advert which which is, is the most impactful, or you know, converts exactly. the best. Exactly. Now, there's there's a question there saying um, from someone who says, "How do you plan the perfect ad? What if you're not great on camera? Does it need to be? Oh, look at that." Well, nicely done. Does it need to be a face to camera advert? Um, none of my, so this is going to help you. None of my ads are videos. Every single one is a plain picture. Just a picture. Do you want to know yeah, how plain it is? Work. Can I share screens again? Go on then. <laughs> Last time. <laughs> Promise. Um, you're going to have to let me do it though. All right. Let me know when you're ready. You can get it, you can get it ready and I can stick it on. Okay. Okay. I have um, two seconds. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Right. Just just stick it on now because I've just got one on there. Oh, love that. Okay. Oh, you said you're ready, Chris. <laughs> I'm ready. Can you see? So you see this here. This 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 page is um um so I'll just stick you over there so I know what I'm looking at. Good. So this this is the ad. This is actually me just sharing organically on my page, but instead of going into ad manager again, this was the winning ad. Um Facebook ads, five day challenge. It that's looks it. like it's on Facebook. It's it. That's it. Like, <laughs> like that's it, gang. Like you know, that was it. Do you know what I mean? Can, yeah. Do you know you do nice, that? And nice and simple. It's just simple. Mm. But and you know, I my guys didn't even create that picture. Like you know, <laughs> I've just we 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 just got it. You know, stuck stuck it on there. Jobs are good. At this it. is one of the things I find people doing as well. Is they 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 try and get the perfect advert right or the perfect um whatever it is the perfect bit of media out there um and that's that comes before they even tested things uh, and they've everything into getting this perfect thing out it goes 
even even their product out it goes and they get feedback from the market saying that's not the right that's not the right thing for now and um and that can that can really slow you down but the the businesses that i find you know typically do particularly well are the ones who who are very very quick to adapt and test things they're able to get things out very very quickly do you agree with that yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. If you, you the, the, if you can stay nimble, and then you're laughing. That that's why the entrepreneur space can do so well in this um, this this time. And it's you, you just keep on ebbing and flowing. You see opportunities, you react to it. Um, you keep you. One, one thing to do as well, guys, is once you know something's working, keep that churning as hard as possible. Go down it, but then always be in search of the other, the next funnel. So if I know that Facebook ad's working well, I'm going to carry on doing that next week and the week after, but I'm going to add in a YouTube ad funnel. I'm going to add in a LinkedIn outreach funnel. I'm going to be adding in all these different things because once one starts to dry up, your whole marketing will dry up or your business, yeah. one income stream dries up, the whole your whole income stream dries up. So you've got to be able to be a bit more nimble. That's great advice. That's really good to kind of, you know, always keep something going so that you can move to the next thing when one dries up. Brilliant advice. Um, see, we've got another question here. We've got loads of questions, by the way. I'll see if I can get through a few of these guys. Um, if my Facebook page is integrated with my Insta page, do I need to plan for or with a higher budget? No. So what you do is you, um, you, you basically can turn on um, automatic placements on your Facebook ads, which is, which is the default Facebook ad. Um, way so if you put an ad out um, it will mean it will share it on Instagram as well as Facebook and you don't even need an Instagram profile to do this you can do that just with your normal Facebook page and it will share on Instagram anyway but just as your, your the icon on the ad will be your Facebook page icon it's not it's not a drama so um, some some sometimes we like to go only Instagram ads because we might do something that's a little bit more kind of you know selfies in front of Lamborghinis that seems to work well with someone else's quote over it um, something awful like that. Um, but no, so, so <laughs> if, if you want to do well on Instagram, right, stand in front of someone else's flash car yeah. and put a picture of you with sunglasses on and then put a, a quote that someone else's quote on there and kind of go, yeah, you know? It's normally well, pretty easy to do that in Dubai. is is not too, not too yeah. difficult. You, you can probably do that accidentally in Dubai, but yeah. not, not, not Dubai, right now. it's a little bit harder now, but... <laughs> Yeah, you're not, you're not allowed out. That's the thing. So you've got to go. You've got to go find some underground car park you can sneak into. There's kind of let's get, get something off Google Images, guys. Get on Zoom and use the background. Change the background. Glasses on. There you go. Green, green screen it up. You there you go. Up. You're the most popular person on on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right. Um, another question here from Tim. Um, is there a blueprint available on how to structure these adverts, Richard? Um, well, so so obviously the, the the free Facebook ads challenge that I showed you goes um, shows you that how to do a traffic ad and also retargeting ad. Um, but um, you can also so Facebook does some really quite nice training, and also if you start to set up a Facebook ads um, account and start spending money, Facebook themselves will contact you and will offer a phone call. And that phone call is really valuable because they will actually tell you how to spend your money better with them. Um, but they will also tell you how to actually do better ads as well. So um, so they are they are good as, and um, they are very helpful. Yeah, because I, I get quite a few emails from Facebook saying, do you want to have a call to talk about it? You're saying it's worth doing those calls. Take it. 100% take it because what they do is it's someone that's, you know, a Facebook person and they'll get you to log into your account and they they will go, right, yeah, we can see you're doing this, this and this. But have you actually thought about one of the things they love at the moment is budget optimization instead of creative. So they say, well, have you thought about um, splitting out audiences and then seeing how um, you do budget optimization for those audiences over certain amounts of but they're quite clever on data and that what they see, they start to see trends. And then it becomes you just just take it, just go yeah, you know, like what what why why wouldn't you take it? It's free advice. Mm. Um, just one final final question um, for us here at FNX Academy. Our, our main our main purpose, our kind of mission here is is to help support um, small local businesses in Dubai who are going through a tough time. Uh, a big part of that is helping small businesses pivot online. That's that's something we really want to help people with. What advice would you give? 
to a traditionally physical face-to-face -face business that um, is struggling with ideas on how to get online, um, what advice would you give to them uh, how to start off and where to go to get online? Okay, so so how to start off and where to go online? Um, it depends on what type of business, because clearly if you're a shop, it becomes really easy. You can think about um, creating your own e-commerce store. Um, but you... Shall I give you an example? Yeah. So, so, so for instance, uh, tourism is massive out here. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you are running a, a business with tourism um, in, within Dubai, obviously no one can fly in. So that becomes very tricky. What would what would what kind of route you go down? So, so is this tourism for right now um, for people coming to Dubai and say they're you know they do tours of certain places or they do sand dune safaris or something like that? Yeah, all, all you know uh, tours in Dubai and surrounding countries. Yeah. Okay. So, so I've got a client called Party Hard Travel. Um, and they do kind of 18 to 30s um, party clubbing holidays in Spain and um, Italy and stuff like that. So clearly no one's going out in big numbers partying in Spain and Italy at the moment. So um, what we've had to do is, is understand first, understand that the, nobody's coming. So what one of the bits was kind of coming up to the reality of that this isn't going to happen for us for a while. Then the second bit is to when actually give people a ability to book now but switch their dates later and we did a massive campaign going to september october for them to actually get a lot of people to be doing booking now and getting deposits now which help the cash flow but with the ability for them to switch the date later and that's been working relatively well because obviously not lots of people booking clubbing holidays anyway but they're kind of giving discounts and then doing um, booking later but the other thing that i'd be doing is very much putting together um, the, or spending the time putting together definitive guides for what people could be doing. So actually trying to put together the, you know, the 101 things people should be doing in Dubai or the 72 things that you simply can't miss in Abu Dhabi, you know? And so you you kind of mm -hmm. put those things together. And actually the, the things that you, if you were to do, you know, the 12 things you'd be crazy to miss out seeing that most people don't in Dubai, the people mm -hmm. are like, What's that? Like, I need yeah. to kind of see that. So you start to put these nice guides and then you start to um, put together um, downloads. And, and what we said, what one of the things that we're saying a lot at the moment is that build the relationships of today that are the sales of tomorrow. So if you can actually build the communities of today, such as um, you drive people into, say, a download, which is kind of like the 101 things you should do, um, or the, the buybucketlist.com, and then that also then has a Dubai bucket list Facebook group. And so then people download the guide. They then jump into the group. You then start warming them up in the group and talking to them and then, you know, building those relationships. And then you start putting them into um, different products. And of course, any competitor that comes into your Facebook group, you just kick them out of the group. So you've only got punters that you can actually sell to in that group. You give them loads of great free advice. You help them out with the tours, et cetera. And it can work really well. So that's what you can do. Now, if you then start to scale that, you can start to put that out onto nice videos and stuff onto YouTube and start to get audience that way. If you can get up to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, you can then start to access their monetization. And if you can then start to monetize those views, so you've got a thousand subscribers, um, you then can get, say, say you get 30,000 views on a video, you can then monetize that and you can get a few pence per view but when you're getting thousands of views, tens of thousands of views, um, that soon starts to add up and you can start to build income that way by being the definitive Dubai bucket list um, channel, the Facebook group, the online audience. So by the time people actually want to come back to making bookings, it's like shooting. You're you know, like very perfect, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, now is a brilliant time to A, you know, build community because everyone is seeking community um, and, and B, develop assets, right? Especially digital assets. Take all of your, your IP and turn it into digital assets, right? If, you are, if you're working in tourism, as we spoke about, or you're a chef or whatever it is, diving into what it is you know about, taking all that knowledge and turning it into an IP asset, uh, a, a digital asset is gonna, it's gonna really be an amazing time for you to do that. All this extra time we've now got because we're not stuck in the day-to-day -day of what we're doing. Um, Richard, that was 
Absolutely I'm, amazing, I'm, mate. Really. Like, like, like chefs. So, so here's, here's so you, you, you mentioned chefs there, or you mentioned, yeah. um, um, like you might have um, musicians or artists or whatever that are, are, are actually who, who who would be playing in the bars and stuff that aren't open. I've got a pianist that does p wedding pianists, and he's doing a live show every Friday, and he's getting people that are donating as if it's like, um, you know, just to, to get like a tip bucket um, whilst he's doing his shows. And he's making a fortune doing that because he's got lots of people watching him live. So it's just kind of thinking, yes, I, you know, I'm a pianist that works in a bar or I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a chef, but actually I can't do anything, but maybe I could do a show and then people can see that. And then you can get donations. You can get people to do in clicking on ads and you get sponsorship from that, whatever it is, there will be a way. There will yeah. be a way. There is a way, just a, just a different way. The, the only, this is what I keep saying to, to small business owners who are trying to pivot online. I say your values and your purpose haven't changed. The outcome of <laughs> what you want to achieve your clients hasn't changed. Just the delivery in the middle has changed. And that, that's the only thing you need to really focus on changing. Um, Richard, that was amazing, mate. Really, really appreciate you getting on. Um, I'm going to post a link to the five-day challenge. I'm going to do the challenge myself. I think it'll be good fun. I think anyone who's up for uh, you know to learn more about Facebook ads, Richard is, is the guy to go to. So let's get on his um, five-day challenge. Other than that, there's any other way that our guys here can, can get hold of you. Can, can, I just, can I just give a prize to the quote of the day? And the, and the prize is that the fact that you got the quote of the day. So there's someone here that's, a, that's on here that says, I'm a photographer with access to a Lamborghini. Contact me for good rates, people. <laughs> yes! Get in there, see? Outside the box. <laughs> right. So I, I can't see who that is, but they are they are here. They are ready, guys. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. Um, good. So, yeah. Um, look, guys, just the leadgenacademy.co.uk. Um, just jump in. Um, you won't be able to find the five-day challenge unless you look at the link. Um, that we'll post um, after this. So jump on that five-day challenge and um, um, that's the best way to contact me because I'll contact you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Richard. See you later, guys. Big love. Take, Take care. care.